Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm filling in for your normal host, Scott Wheeler, and with me today I have a gentleman you may recognize. He's been on TV uh, one or two times before, I think. <laughs> uh, former Governor Jim Douglas is joining us, and thank you for joining us, Jim. Great to be here, Todd. Thank you. And you're on not the campaign trail today. You're on a, a book tour? Is that what we call it? It's kind of like a campaign, but the stakes aren't quite as high. No? <laughs> and it's a, a great experience. Uh, it's an opportunity to get around the state, as I always did when I was running for office, but in a different context. And as you suggested, I've uh, just written a memoir, a book I entitled The Vermont Way, about my experiences in state government and before, and um, a few little anecdotes along the way as well. Well, uh, I'm anxious to read it. Is it out yet, or are you doing the... Uh... It, is, uh, it is. There's a website called the Vermont Way, all one word, dot U.S., okay. and folks can order it there. Um, it's at bookstores around the state. I'm not sure what the nearest one might be to, uh, to your listening area, um, but uh, it's going to be uh, sold uh, through Jimmy's Quick Stop, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy's Quick Stop and Bookstore. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> well, you know, we are we did have a bookshop here, but it, it unfortunately did go out of business um, more because they had opportunities to move out west. But uh, is it available on like the Kindle and all that stuff? It's too? not at this point. It not may yet. be later on, but our hope is to support our local independent bookstores, and so Absolutely. we're starting there. Um, I've been to a number of them. I'll continue to be around the state to. Um, talk and or sign books uh, as people purchase them. Uh, so we may go uh, to different media at some point, but for now it's local bookstores and our own website, website thevermontway.us. That's awesome. Well, you can't really sign a Kindle, right? Or an iPad. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can. Well, actually... They uh, may not be very happy, though. It, it's interesting. Um, uh, the publisher has uh, a capability of accepting... Uh, um, credit card payments on a, an iPad and you actually sign it with your finger uh, oh, to yeah? authorize the payment. So who knows what's next? I might have to try that. <laughs> we'll get into a little background and what the book's about in uh, just a little bit. But first, um, how did the idea of writing a book come about? Is it something while you were in office you were thinking of doing or, I or something really... that was kind of suggested afterwards? Um, uh, sort of a combination of the two. Uh, I wasn't really giving it serious thought, but a lot of people suggested that it might be a good thing to do. Um, people would say to me, gosh, you've been in state government for 35 years, you've seen a lot of change, uh, you have uh, a lot of stories to tell, maybe some lessons learned along the way, and you've met some interesting people, so perhaps you could um, uh, put it in writing. Um, I wasn't enthusiastic at first, but the more I thought about it, well, not too many governors recently have written memoirs, wow. and um, perhaps I could tell about uh, Vermont's recent political history and and offer some uh, uh, some perspectives on it. So I decided to do it. Did it come natural to you, or was it one of those things where you sat down at the computer and went, hmm? No, um, it came pretty easily. Uh, I just sat down in front of the screen and typed as quickly as I could, and then. Uh, after I'd uh, disgorged everything, I uh, tried to put it in uh, some kind of comprehensible uh, order and format. Um, and then I um, uh, went through the editing process, which is humbling in a way because um, authors don't like to see any of their precious work um, deleted or changed by an editor. Right. Uh, words are kind of like your children. You, you want to keep them all. Um, but uh, I think the editor did a great job uh, uh, tightening up. There, there were some areas where I think I had rambled too much in the original text. I, I'm not sure everybody needs to understand how I reorganized the files in the Secretary of State's office, you know, things well, like that. It depends. <laughs> uh, well, so he uh, uh, got uh, rid of some of the less interesting things. And, and then the, um, preparing the index was a, an effort all by itself. There are some books that have none. There are others that have very uh, brief ones. But uh, I actually read the chapter on indexation in the Chicago Manual of Style, uh, which suggests that um, the index ought to be 
uh, about 5% of the length of the book. Uh, uh, in other words, a comprehensive index. Sure. And so I uh, went through, and it's pretty easy to figure you want to index proper nouns or names and, and um, um, places and so forth. But, but then um, I got thinking, well, do, do I index uh, events or concepts or um, policy areas? Uh, so it got to be pretty tricky as well. And then I um, had to go through the uh, uh, photograph selection process. Uh, I picked out about six times as many as are in the book and wrote yeah. captions for each one um, in order to give the, uh, the editor some, some options. I had a student research assistant. I'm doing some teaching now at Middlebury College. Yeah. Uh, a student who d did my fact checking because there was a uh, uh, there, was, uh, there were a lot of times when I would go through and I'd think, gosh, was that 04 or 06 that I proposed that? And so this student went through the uh, newspaper morgues and official state records and helped me on that. And um, then uh, um, I had to get a few uh, folks to write some nice things about me on the back cover and uh, <laughs> pick the uh, design of the jacket. And so there are a lot of steps along the way. and. Uh, uh, I had hoped, to be honest, to have it done uh, before now. I've been out of office after all three and a half years, but yeah. uh, but it's taken some time to go through all those steps. So, did it? Has it taken? How long would you say the whole process took you? I started writing it. Uh, I would say um, toward the end of 2011. So it's been okay. uh, not quite three years from first starting wow. the idea, uh, kind of an outline of. Uh, chapters and uh, until the finished product. Now the the cover which we're going to show right now on the screen is that the painting that is in the in the uh, state house when you go in there? It is. It's I my official it was. my official portrait. Uh, it was done by a great artist in my hometown of Middlebury named Kate Gridley who's uh, done some other portraiture and is a real uh, a professional. Um, and then uh, um, a, a Middlebury classmate named Bob Eddy uh, took a photograph of the portrait. Um, if you or I did it, we'd probably have a lot of uh, uh, flashes yeah. and uh, you know the lighting wouldn't be right, but, but Bob's a professional photographer and so he, uh, he uh, shot it for the cover. Um, but uh, the, the State Archivist told me that of all the gubernatorial uh, paintings in the State House, uh, this is one of just a few that is truly a work of art. It's well done, it's uh, realistic, and uh, reflects not only the way I look, but but uh, my demeanor as well. So I think she did a great job. She did. Yeah. I mean, uh, isn't Howard Dean's like sitting in a boat fishing or something, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah. It's sir. been a while since I've been in there, but that sticks in my mind for some reason. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, <laughs> he, he's, he's actually on the shore next to a canoe, but that's um, what, okay. But it's uh, quite uh, non-traditional and. And um, when I was getting close to selecting a portrait artist, uh, the curator asked if I might consider something a little more traditional. Yeah. Uh, the other problem with uh, Governor Dean's portrait is that it's huge, and uh, yeah. the uh, wall space in the state house is somewhat limited. So mine's uh, not the smallest, but uh, far from the largest. Hey. Well, it looks good. Now, did you have to pose for the painting? That was an interesting process. Uh, I did that in the fall of 2010. Um, so you d it wasn't a photograph that she painted from. You actually had to stand. Well, there. it's both. Uh, she both, okay. she started with a photo shoot and uh, had me um, stand in her studio while a professional photographer took um, hundreds of different uh, poses, and I would uh, do some uh, serious, some with a smile, some with a half turn, uh, some yeah. obviously with my hand in my pocket, which is ultimately what was chosen. And uh, from that, uh, she drew uh, a sort of rough design, and um, then I posed uh, after she had begun the process. Uh, and um, there were a couple of sessions of several hours each, as I recall, but it was interesting. Uh, I, I sat down and kind of uh, uh, looked like a sphinx, I guess, and she said, no, 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 you, you, you can move and <laughs> Breathe. Be natural. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but she said, just make sure you keep looking in the same direction while I'm doing this. Um, and then uh, um, she uh, did the finishing touches, and, huh. uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. Very cool. So we'll back up a little bit. Um, the, the first time I met you was right after you had gotten into office. You came up to the radio station I used to work for, which is 
Moon 92. And uh, one thing that's that's different in this interview is there there's no people in suits like peering over our <laughs> shoulders. <laughs> well, that uh, is uh, an adjustment. I, I have a, a short chapter in the book on uh, the state police who were with me um, during my time in office, and mm -hmm. they're they're great guys. Uh, they go to a an executive protection program, which is uh, uh, held not only for uh, public official security details, but for those who uh, protect celebrities and corporate executives and anybody else who, uh, who who finds that need. And their their mission, of course, is to make sure that their protectee is safe at all times, but also not to hover too much, to right. give him or her some space. And I think the uh, state troopers did an outstanding job. They uh, they had a job to do, but they weren't uh, overly intrusive, and um, and uh, it worked very well. I remember that was something that took you some getting used to. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when you first got elected, you, you, you weren't really too keen on that idea of having uh, it, escorts and, and stuff. But. It, it's, um, it's confining in a way. Um, uh, it made my life more regimented than, um, than we would like to have it. Um, I had to determine in advance what time I was going to be uh, picked up to go to the office each morning, whereas you or I might decide, well, whenever we wake up, we'll <laughs> you know, get going. And, yeah. um, and uh, they would uh, check out my itinerary in advance. If I were going out of state on a trip, they'd get in touch with the state police of the state where the meeting was being held. Uh, so um, uh, they had a lot of work to do, and, and it was fairly scripted. The, I guess the the good news is that um, it was awfully nice uh, when I um, finished up uh, an evening event in Newport or Bennington or somewhere far from home to be able to slide into the passenger side of the car and relax on the way home rather yeah. than have a long drive ahead of me. So. Uh, so uh, there are pros and cons, but uh, they're, they're professionals and I appreciate their hard work. Now here's a picture of you that we're going to show right now um, as a child that's in your book and you're sitting in, in a wagon and you were telling me before, uh, I, I bring this up because you were telling me before the interview that you were thinking a little did I know. <laughs> well it's a picture of uh, me in a wagon at a very young age with my younger sister. Um, I seem to have uh, persuaded her to pull me somehow. Okay. That's what older siblings can do. Sure. Uh, but um, <laughs> I suggested in the caption in the book that I would never have imagined some decades later that I would be, in fact, uh, driven around by a state trooper for eight years. So maybe there was a premonition there, Todd. But not in a wagon. No, no, not <laughs> in a wagon. Uh, in a very modest sedan. And here's a yeah. <laughs> and here's another uh, picture of you as a radio DJ. And I, I remember when you first came into the studio, you, one of the things you said to me was, well, where are all the records? And I said, <laughs> where are the CDs? We didn't even play CDs. We were all uh, computerized. That and was uh, interesting. I, I thought for a while that might be my career, frankly. Yeah. I, I um, worked at the college station in Middlebury, WRMC-FM, and then at the local commercial station in town, WFAD. And um, uh, I grew up in western Massachusetts, so I worked summers for a, a radio and TV station down there. Uh, so I, I was quite interested in radio and uh, thought I might uh, pursue that as a career. But I had dual interests and got involved in politics while still a student, and that uh, overcame my interest in broadcasting, I guess. You probably made a good decision. <laughs> I speak from uh, experience. <laughs> well, they both have their challenges, Todd. You're they exactly do. right. Um, broadcasting today is a very volatile industry. Uh, it's a, a tough business uh, to is. be in. Um, on the other hand, uh, running for office every two years is not exactly a very stable way to make a living either. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, you're, you're literally running for your job. So. That's right. It worked out almost every time. So when you got you got involved in politics at, at a fairly young age, um, I read um, in an, in another interview with you that it was at 1964 when <laughs> Barry Goldwater ran for the president. You got involved locally in that campaign, locally in Vermont. I mean, because he was from what Arizona. Yeah, actually, I was uh, living uh, in Western Mass then, where I grew up and uh, and went to school before I. 
uh, came to Vermont and Middlebury College, so I went to the uh, county Republican headquarters down there to stuff envelopes and do whatever young volunteers do. Yeah. Uh, it, of course, wasn't a very successful campaign, but it got me interested in the process. I got to meet some candidates for state representative, and, and to a 13-year-old kid, these were real celebrities, and I was in sure. awe of these folks coming in. And uh, only eight years later, I was one of them myself in, in yeah. another state. So. Uh, times change. You, yeah, you got in the leg was at the legislature first, and yeah. you were real young, weren't you? One of the youngest. I was 21, uh, but interestingly, yeah. there were three members younger than I that freshman year. Really, there were two who were 20 and one who was 19. We had the highest percentage of legislators age 25 and under in the nation. Uh, there's a picture in the book of uh, uh, most of them with Governor Salmon, who was in office at that time. Um, so we had a, a very robust uh, group of young people. Um, we tried to have a youth caucus because we figured maybe we could use our numbers to leverage some support for various initiatives. But it's interesting, Todd, we, we didn't seem to have a whole lot in common other than our ages. Yeah. Uh, there were <laughs> Republicans and Democrats and city folks and farm people. and uh, yeah. So the caucus didn't really last very long. But uh, yeah, I was 21 when I started. Any of those people that continued in politics? Yes. Um, yeah. um, one was uh, Harold Guyard, who later served in the state senate from Madison County. One was Michael Bohoski, who uh, served in the House for many years and is currently the Commissioner of Buildings and General Services for, for the state. Um, let's see, uh, uh, well, those two certainly went on, and I can't recall if others did. There was a, uh, another freshman that year who wasn't that young, um, but it was Dick Mazza from Colchester, who is now the, um, the um, um, uh, he's, he's a state senator and, and is what's called the, the third member of the Committee on Committees, so he's a very uh, senior and influential state senator. I know our, uh, one of our former senators, Vince Aluzzi, was, was very young as well, but I don't think he was in his early 20s. Late 20s, Late as 20s, I recall. Yeah, when he, yeah he, uh, he came in 1980. I was a grizzled veteran at that point. <laughs> I haven't been around eight years. Um, but Vince uh, uh, likes to say that he, uh, he brought Ronald Reagan in on his coattails. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you started uh, that young age. Legislature, did you do anything before? You ran for governor? Did, did you oh, yes. do Congress or, well, not Congress. I know you didn't do Congress. Yeah. Um, I, um, senator I, or something. No, I never no. was a state senator. I, I was in the House for uh, three and a half terms. I was majority leader for the last term and a half and then uh, left uh, during my final term to become executive assistant to Governor Snelling. Uh, his okay. executive assistant, a, a great fellow named John Gray from Franklin County, died suddenly of a heart attack. And John was a veteran. He'd had several other posts in state government and uh, a great guy. Um, but uh, the governor felt a real void in his administration and asked if I would leave the legislature to come on his team. And I did. Um, I, uh, I didn't stay as long as I thought I would because uh, within a year and a half, uh, the office of Secretary of State became vacant. The incumbent uh, decided to step down and, and uh, on fairly late notice, uh, just a few weeks before the filing deadline in July of 1980, I got in that race and ultimately was successful and enjoyed that a lot. It was uh, a 12-year run uh, uh, working with a lot of our municipal clerks around the state, uh, dealing with professional regulation, the uh, filing of corporate records, the state archives, uh, the elections process. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but um, I think it's important not to stay in a job forever. It um, mm -hmm. gets kind of stale, time to move on, pass the baton to somebody else. And so I had my unsuccessful outing in 1972 when I ran for the U.S. Senate. Uh, I thought that uh, Pat Leahy had been there too long. He'd been there 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there'd be a time for a change. How many years has he been there now? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, so I came up a little short, but I have no regrets. It was a uh, uh, it was a good, uh, good experience. My expectations weren't uh, weren't high, but um, there was a growing anti-incumbent sentiment. It really peaked two years later, when the Republicans took over the U.S. House of Representatives, and and uh, a number of um, uh, senators were defeated, but not in '92. So I um, uh, did a couple of things for a few years there, and um, uh, and then ran for treasurer in '94, which. Uh, 
uh, as a job that I had for eight years before seeking the governorship. And Treasurer was interesting. It was uh, more internal than Secretary of State. I didn't deal with a lot of folks around Vermont as much, except for bankers sure. uh, and um, investment managers and folks in financial services, and a lot of them were out of state. Um, but it was a good uh, experience, again, to uh, learn about the intricacies of state finance, um, uh, issuance of bonds, investing our, our portfolios, um, uh, dealing with uh, um, bond lawyers, financial advisors, uh, and investment managers, and so forth. So I, I felt well grounded based on my experiences when I sought the governorship uh, 12 years ago. As I say, you had plenty of experience before you. What now, uh, was governor in the back of your head, or <laughs> was it kind of suggested? Interesting um, question. Um, for the other jobs that I sought, uh, I, um, uh, I, I decided on fairly short notice. Uh, Secretary of State, as I mentioned, in July of 80, and um, when I ran for treasurer, that was pretty close to the filing deadline, too. But the governorship was different, and the reason is, uh, in uh, 2001, when Governor Dean was inaugurated for his final term, there was speculation, even then, in January of that year, two years before the <laughs> next uh, governor would be inaugurated, about who might run. And there was another Republican considering the race actively in the media. And so I thought, well, if I'm at all interested, I guess I have to kind of put down my marker and let folks, especially within the Republican Party, know of my interest or yeah. I'm going to be left uh, uh, left at the altar. So, right. so I, I started um, um, suggesting I might have an interest uh, quite early uh, in that biennium. Um, I didn't uh, actively campaign until the following year, but began to, to organize. So it was uh, uh, more of a, a lead up to, to the campaign than I had been used to. Yeah. And the rest is history, right? I would say so. It was a great opportunity to serve Vermont. Uh, you know, we have uh, brief terms compared to most states, just two years, and there yeah. are no limits. Um, I, uh, I, I probably could have continued. Uh, the polls were pretty positive in 2010, but I just felt that um, uh, it was time for a number of reasons, um, some of them personal. Uh, Dorothy and I at the time had four aging parents, two of whom have since died. Uh, we were new grandparents. Um, um, uh, I, I told my generally young staff that I was, after all, 10 years older than when I first started thinking about a gubernatorial <laughs> run and, and um, maybe uh, couldn't keep up that pace. Right. Because I, I said, Todd, that I want to be as energetic on my last day in office as on my first. And uh, sometimes you see people who kind of tune out a little early or distracted or thinking about their next adventure. And I, sure. I just felt strongly about serving Vermont uh, to the max right up until the end. That's, that's always a good thing to do, right? Is it, is it, is it like uh, what Pete Townsend said? Like it's, you know, better to, to, to fade away than burn out or something? Like, I don't know. Well, or, or I'll give you a, a similar analogy. Uh, <laughs> in show business, they sometimes say you want to leave the audience wanting more. There it is. So uh, I, I kept that in mind. So we'll do a little shift. I, I was reading while you were writing the book, they, they urged you to talk about... Um, because it's not a book that's just going to be read in Vermont. I mean, the, the full title of your book is The Vermont Way, A Republican Governor Leads America's Most Liberal State, which I don't think it's a shock to anybody watching that Vermont's a liberal state. Um, but I think, you know, so people are going to be reading this book all across the country, maybe trying to figure out some secrets. Um, but they said, you know, you, you're going to want to mention some people that, that they know, like, you know, Bernie Sanders is a name everybody knows, Howard Dean, uh, Jim Jeffords. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's in there, but I've also seen some other pictures in there of some, you've met some, you've uh, rubbed elbows with some pretty big names. Well, I've met uh, most of the recent presidents. Um, yeah, we've uh, got this picture of you with um, the first President Bush. Mm -hmm. That was uh, taken in Kenny Bunkport, although not at his home. Uh, it, was okay. a, it was a fundraiser <laughs> in uh, uh, 99 or 2000 for his son, who was seeking the presidency then. And uh, uh, the elder President Bush came over to a, a nearby hotel and said, gosh, I'm sorry I can't have you out at the house, but we've got another group there. Um, so uh, uh, we, we did it cool. uh, nearby. But uh, he's, he's a great guy and uh, uh, still kicking, although yeah. showing his 90 years. 90 years, just jumped out of a plane. Yeah, amazing. I don't he's think done I'll, that every year since he was 80, right? I don't think I'll emulate that no? Uh, example. No. Well, you've still got 20 years to think <laughs> about it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that? Yeah. I think I read your age somewhere. Uh, picture of you with uh, 
President Clinton. Was he president at the time of that uh, photo? Yes, he was, he uh, but that was when I was state treasurer. Okay. I, I met him a couple of times. Uh, first, when I was Secretary of State, uh, we had a meeting of the National Association of Secretaries of State in Arkansas, and um, we met him when he was governor. Uh, he was quite skinny then. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, I, was, uh, huh. uh, I, I remember uh, being impressed by that. And, and then uh, I met him again when he had the state treasurers at the White House during one of our uh, National Association meetings, and that's uh, where this picture was taken. And then uh, here you are with George W. Bush. And I have a question to ask about this photo, because the podium that you're behind says uh, Sugar Bush on right. it. Now, I've read that, was this taken in Vermont? Yes. It but, was. But before he assumed office. He okay. Was, he was campaigning. I yeah. was confused, because I remember, I remember when Obama came to Vermont a few years back, and it was a big thing because I believe it had been since Clinton that a president had visited, a sitting president had vi visited Vermont. Mm -hmm. and, and I read that Bush had visited all 49 states except for Vermont. And then I thought I might have uncovered something <laughs> no. like, you know, a treasure because I said, this says Sugar Bush. It's got to be taken in Vermont. So it was before he was president. Yes, it was a Republican fundraising dinner in the fall of 99. So he was very okay. early in his uh, campaign. I actually hadn't formally announced, but it was kind of um, sensed at that point that he was likely to become a candidate. So uh, we had a great crowd there. He gave a good speech uh, revving up the uh, party faithful, but it was taken before he took office. And frankly, I regret that he never came to Vermont. I, I know he's not popular here. He knows that. Uh, but still, it seems to me that a president, any president, ought to be able to visit every state in the yeah. country. And any president's not popular in any state, depending where you go. <laughs> that's exactly right. And you can't please all the people all the time, right? That's correct. That's correct. And here you are with our current president. I remember when this picture came out. I, I feel like it was in a magazine or something. I know it was in the local press. Yeah. This is at the White House? It is. Uh, the president had only been in office about a week and a half. It yeah, was... there's no gray hair on there. No, yet. that's right. Uh, <laughs> on either one of us. <laughs> you need to go reshoot that picture. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, February of 2009, and um, I was vice chairman of the National Governors Association at the time. I assumed the chairmanship later. And um, we were talking about the recovery package, the so-called stimulus bill that passed the Congress uh, later that year. Um, all the governors um, across the political spectrum uh, needed help. Our state uh, budgets were in, in severe straits. We were seeing our revenue uh, structure collapse, a lot of people needing extra help, and, and the money just wasn't there. So uh, the, uh, the support was, was welcome. Um, frankly, uh, governors, again, of both parties were pushing for more money for infrastructure, those so-called shovel-ready projects, rather than just uh, dumping money into, into uh, operating expenses that we couldn't maintain when it dried up. But, but anyway, we, we were there to talk about it. I was the first uh, governor to, to be invited for a one-on-one -on -one meeting in the Oval Office uh, after he, he took uh, office as president. Uh, so that was a privilege. And, and there's a, another photo that um, shows um, the president and me moving a couch. Uh, and that's, uh, that's. I think I've seen that. That's yeah. the same day, and uh, um, in the Oval Office, uh, as our viewers may know, there are two chairs that are against the fireplace, and then two uh, parallel couches that uh, go out uh, on either side of uh, of the fireplace. And and I didn't realize when we were sitting there uh, that th those two couches had been moved apart uh, for the press to come in and take some pictures. So after they were ushered out, uh, the president went over to one end of one of the couches and started to move it back into place, and I instinctively went to the other end of that couch to right. help him move it back. That's what Vermonters do, oh, right? exactly. We help each other. And you would have helped him put it in the back of a pickup truck if he needed to. Whatever, whatever <laughs> he needed. And, but within seconds, uh, a whole bunch of his staff came and moved the other couch back into place. So. Uh, I'll bet he hasn't moved furniture since. No, probably. Well, they were they were feeling each other out. <laughs> you do you were you sitting? Do you sit there in the White House, thinking, you know, I, I was a 21 year old kid in the legislature, and now I'm in the Oval Office. Like that must be a really. Uh, most people just get to do a tour of the White House, and you don't get to see the Oval Office or anything. You've had a little more in depth tour. Well, I've been in there with both the 43rd and 44th presidents. That's yep. right, and and gotten to know both of them pretty well because of my work with the National Governors Association. And, mm -hmm. and back to that uh, photo with uh, then Governor Bush, 
Uh, I was his state chairman, even though he didn't carry Vermont in the 2000 right. election. So um, uh, I got to know both of them pretty well. Uh, very different personalities, but uh, both uh, smart guys and uh, very pleasant. And and uh, it was a privilege for for me to get to know them. And and uh, my wife Dorothy um, enjoyed. Uh, um, the black tie dinners that the governors always have at the White House with the president and first lady and good food, um, not bad, not, not bad. bad. But you know what's interesting? <laughs> I thought Todd? you were going to say not good. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, um, uh, uh, after all, there is an official White House chef who prepares this carefully. Yes. I'm not a real connoisseur. I, I'm happy with anything basically, yeah. uh, but a very elegant uh, meal, of course, served sure. by uh, uh, um, tuxedoed waiters and and. Um, uh, they move the meal along pretty quickly, which is kind of interesting. You know, as soon oh. as you put your fork down after that last bite, it's uh, removed and it's ready to uh, go. Yeah, and President Bush in particular uh, did not like to stay up very late. Really? Yeah, he, he was uh, early to bed and early to rise. And uh, there's always, after those uh, dinners, uh, uh, some entertainment and uh, President Clinton never went to bed till like four in the morning. No, right? and uh, <laughs> President Bush, the other extreme, the new president, uh, kind of middle of the road on that, yeah. I would say. But uh, it's interesting to see their uh, their habits. I read uh, real quick, and we will have to wrap up, unfortunately, a few minutes. We probably could go on forever, but you know, time constraints. I did read though, and I thought this was funny uh, because you are Repu Republican governor, and Vermont pretty much all the electoral votes are going to go to the Democratic candidate for president. And I heard that when you met President Obama, and you talk about this in your book, he said, how did you win Vermont? Is that true? That is true. Uh, the first <laughs> time I met him, he was president-elect at the time, yeah. and uh, he met with the governors in Philadelphia. And I, I, as I say, I never met the gentleman before, but that was the first thing he asked, was, how in the world did you win in Vermont? And my answer was, it was easy, sir. I just grabbed onto your coattails. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Well, hey. Um, so let's see. We want to, we, the, the theme of the book, obviously, I, I heard there's not a lot about your early childhood. It's, it's pretty much your political career. It is. I, I had a, a very uh, uh, pleasant and loving childhood, uh, but I, it wasn't remarkable, so I didn't want to dwell right. on it too much. Um, um, and I moved fairly quickly so that about two-thirds of the book is my gubernatorial years. Um, yeah. And I talk about not only the politics of uh, what I experienced, but uh, the major issues I confronted, and, and um, I tried to tell a few uh, uh, stories along the way. But I close, Todd, with, uh, without spoiling the ending for our viewers, uh, <laughs> with uh, some expressions of concern about the state of the political um, um, seen today. It seems to me that uh, we're a lot grumpier than we were. There's more polarization, especially at the national level, and um, as a result nothing gets accomplished. Look at the U.S. Congress with no budget in four years and uh, 18 trillion dollar debt, uh, not passing many bills, just um, sniping at each other. Uh, and I, I think that's a shame because we've got to get back to a time when the democratic process works. And, and uh, I suggest that it's better in Vermont, but to be honest, not as good as it used to be. Um, more partisanship here than, than I can recall 40 years ago. So uh, I think it's time for all Vermonters and all Americans to take stock of where we are and, and see if we can't do better. But you're done with politics, right? Oh, yes. Uh, my, That's what I've heard. No chance that you're going to... My wife has exercised her veto. Uh, so <laughs> I don't uh, think you're going to see me running for anything except town moderator in Middlebury. I'm still okay. doing that after do that. nearly 30 years. And you're still uh, involved with the college? Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Uh, it's kind of like a time warp. I, I graduated from Middlebury in uh, uh, 1972, and 40 years later, I'm back teaching, and uh, it's, it's quite different. Sure. Um, I, I remember telling several classes, uh, you know, I wrote my thesis on, on a typewriter with carbon paper, to which they <laughs> replied, what's carbon paper? <laughs> so things are different. Things are definitely different. Uh, a couple more pictures before we close. Uh, this is you um, kissing a cow. I'm pretty sure that only happens in the state of Vermont, maybe some other states, but. It was at the Addison uh, County Fair and Field Days in 2000. Uh, Jim Jeffords, our U.S. Senator, was running for his final term, yep. um, and uh, that's my home county, so I was going around the fair with him. I was running for my last term as state treasurer, not that I knew it was my last term, right. uh, and um, someone from a, a local radio station, you know how those folks are, 
um, um, came up to us and said that uh, they were having some charitable event and uh, uh, we could raise some money if the senator and I would each kiss the cow and so we dutifully obliged. The things you do, huh? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the final picture, here you are uh, walking with your wife in a parade and waving. It's kind of Vermont's version of Pennsylvania Avenue, I guess. It is. Um, uh, every town in the state, it seems, has a parade at one time or another, and, and I certainly enjoyed getting around to as many as I could. Um, the 4th of July was particularly challenging because there were so many that conflicted uh, uh, on the schedule, but I, I did as many as I could, and, and Dorothy was such a great partner through all this, uh, uh, this adventure. Um, I often think that uh, one of the successes of our long marriage is that uh, I was already in the legislature before we got married, and she knew at least on a limited uh, degree uh, what, what she was getting into, um, and uh, she was a great sport coming with me on weekends as a rule and otherwise as, uh, as needed, um, but uh, without the support of a loving family, I don't think I would have done as well as I did. There you go. And she's here with you today. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. Uh, t you talk about traveling. You you came up to the Northeast Kingdom quite a bit, mm -hmm. and uh, beforehand, our, our, the previous governor, Howard Dean, I, I'm sure he probably came up here, but you were seen up here quite a bit, so you must like the Northeast Kingdom. Well, I do, um, but I like all of Vermont, of course, and sure. uh, I, I took that seriously, Todd. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, my chief of staff, Tim Hayward, uh, who was a former Marine captain, uh, kept me uh, very disciplined in many ways, but one thing he did was um, develop a computer program that uh, tracked my time so that I uh, could tell how much time I spent in each uh, county of the state. That's how we broke it out. And uh, my goal was to make it proportional to the population of the state, so that if Orleans County has, um, I don't know, 6% of the state's population, then I should spend 6% of my time there. And and uh, if I saw on a cumulative basis that I was getting behind, then I would, would try to ramp it up and find reasons to come. So I, I did that throughout the whole state, and, and um, uh, I, I really felt that it was important for me to, to spend a proportional amount of time in every part of Vermont. I still have on my BlackBerry, that's how long ago this was, a voicemail from you when you came up to cut the ribbon at the new Welcome Center here yeah. back when I was involved with the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was funny because you would come into town, and I forgot to tell you that when you take that left to go over the bridge right near the Welcome Center, they were working on that bridge. So I had a voicemail from you saying, we had to take a detour. I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes. I always thought that was funny. I said, I probably could have told you that. But well, I was just happy you came. Well, it was, it was fun. I remember uh, the day very, very well. It's a, it's a great spot, a great community. And, and uh, I always enjoy coming to, to Newport and the kingdom. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you made it up today. Well, thank you. And uh, I'm glad Scott Wheeler was on vacation, so I got to interview him for you. <laughs> well, it's it, my pleasure. Truthfully, Todd. probably a much better interview. Uh, well, we'll leave that between you and Scott. Okay. <laughs> the book is called The Vermont Way, A Republican Governor Leads America's Most Liberal State. And if they want to pick it up, local bookstores is a good place to look. Or and the your website, website, the Vermont Way, all one word, dot U.S. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Governor. It's nice having you. My pleasure. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Northeast Kingdom Voice.